on today's show. It's payday for Rudy Gay as the Sacramento Kings agree to a three-year extension. Lance will take them slaps. Lance will take them slaps. Lance Stevenson heads another round of weekend whoopsies. And in the bone zone, we ask Brent Barry if we should feel sorry for Kobe Bryant. It's Monday, November 17th. The starter starts now. the starters whether you're joining us live online listening to the podcast or catching us on nba tv very very happy to have you i'm jay skeets and alongside me as always it's tass Mellis. let's talk some ball to my right the starters blog editor trey kirby hey yo hey yo and finally a man who will be dressed as a unicorn later on the show because he lost a bet lee ellis else mm. <laughs> Lily. Spoiler gamble, alert. Kids. Spoiler alert. <laughs> it's creepy. Kids. Very, very <laughs> creepy. We'll see Lee as a unicorn. But we're looking back at the NBA weekend, and I want to start with the Sacramento Kings. A very good weekend for them. They only played one game, but it was a huge win because they had squandered massive leads and back-to-back losses last week, but they held on on Saturday to beat the defending champion Spurs, a team that they just rarely beat. It was a nine-game losing streak to the Spurs that they snapped and they had lost 21 of 22 to pull out the three-point win. And it was good because, you know, after that great start, they lose those, you know, horrible losses. Yep. Where, again, they're giving up 20-point leads in back-to-back games. But but get back to the physicality in this one and take care of the Spurs 94-91 and, and go to 6-4 and four on the season and, and have improved on both ends of the ball so far. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool thing when there's optimism abound during the preseason around a team. And a lot of teams just don't fulfill that optimism. But DeMarcus Cousins has passed all the tests, all that pressure that's been put on him. I mean, he's flourished. Uh, you know, we all expected him to be a, a very good player in this league, but would he take the next step? And... and he is commanding the ball. He is commanding the defense. He is being the man, not only through the stats. A big, uh, big man. He is a big, big man. Yeah. The way he took it to Tim Duncan oh. on Saturday and the way Tim Duncan was showing him respect because, I mean, you can't really handle that load down low. Yeah. I, I, Sorry, Matt Bonner. <laughs> yeah, don't even, don't even try it, Matt Bonner. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there, there was no point in that. Sorry, Matty. But it, it was a phenomenal win for them. Uh, and they're sort of reminding me of, of the Houston Rockets looking at them now because, yeah, they might have lost a little bit of talent in Isaiah Thomas in the point guard position, but everybody sort of knows their roles a little bit better and there's a bit of a hierarchy there. DeMarcus and Rudy Gay have been forced into these leadership roles Mm -hmm. and, man, they are running with them. Yeah, sometimes teams hate it when their players play for Team USA or play during the summer, but it has really helped out Rudy and DeMarcus, I would think. They just both hit the ground running and you can tell that just playing in an environment where they're kind of forced to play team ball has worn off on them and they're both just great leaders and they're doing the things they need to do to get wins, making little plays here and there down the stretch. DeMarcus, seven double-doubles now in 10 games. What's funny with his stats is, you know, when you're looking at the per-game basis, mm-hmm. they've, they've almost even dropped off a little t- a tad, you know, in the points and the rebounds, but the per-36 are up. He's doing it a little more efficiently. He's still getting into foul trouble. Yeah, that's way. why he's not playing those yeah. 36 Exactly, and that's a, that's exactly it. His, his minutes are down because he gets into foul trouble, and it happened in that Spurs it game. It did, but DeMarcus of old would have let that affect him, but You're instead right. he came out and had a huge second half, and that's what the Sacramento Kings need from him, that he can't get so worked up when he has a bit of a, a rough call, maybe from an official, mm-hmm. even if it's only a perceived rough call. He goes out there and he just goes out and handles his opponent because Tim Duncan, we know he's still a fantastic defender, but he's just not as strong as he used to be, and DeMarcus Cousins just overpowered him, and that's what he has to do to those defenders. Yeah, and DeMarcus plays it old school. He comes onto the low block. He yeah. finds a way to demand the ball and demand the defense. And I, and I think he's demanding his team to play better on the defensive end as well. Uh, that, that's where the biggest jump comes for me. They've gone from 22nd to 14th defensively because DeMarcus Cousins is a bit of an anchor back there. I, I think he's just a little bit more calm. He's obviously got the tools. He is a smart basketball player. Yeah. He just knows how to play the game on both ends. And that's a huge jump to go from 22nd to 14th. And, and as you mentioned, Skeets, a couple really tough losses in there. Uh, owner Vivek Ranadive spent a couple day, days at the league office this past weekend trying to plead with the league, protesting, trying to show them the evidence that, hey, that shouldn't that, that result at the end of the Memphis Grizzlies team should have been in our favor. Right. So are they six and four they or seven and three? Yeah, or eight and two. I mean, they had a shot. They had yeah. a shot there. Uh, Darren Collison also uh, continued to prove a lot of people wrong. Mm-hmm. He hasn't shot the ball exceptionally well, either from the field or from three. But the way he's pushing the tempo yeah. for this team, and of course playing differently than an Isaiah Thomas, a guy that likes to dribble the ball a whole lot yeah. and get his shots, 
He's looking to set up these two guys, be it Cousins or Rudy Gay, and we're going to get to Rudy in the extension in a second. Makes you wonder about Isaiah Thomas, doesn't it? The teams that he play on, a lot more dribbling when he's around. Yeah, yeah. and DeMarcus is just, frankly, happier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, for be sure. Because Isaiah yeah. is not around. I mean, he enjoys this this sort of hierarchy, even though Darren doesn't have the talent. Uh, he's in that number one role, Rudy's in the number two role, and then everybody sort of falls in place. But I, I still think if they get to 40 wins, I think that's a huge accomplishment. Oh, absolutely, team. absolutely. All right, well, the Kings uh, had some more news this weekend, of course. Rudy Gay and the Kings agreeing to a 40 million three-year contract extension. That's gonna run through 2017-18. Extension includes a player option for that final year. What was the first to report this, by the way? Now that opt-out clause gives Gay a little flexibility to become a free agent in two years when, in theory, that NBA salary cap should just explode under the new TV deal. Uh, and we've, seen, we've, we've talked about this before, but his improvement from those 18 games there with the Raps last year. Yeah, everybody killed him for his efficiency numbers with the Raptors. And, and then when he got to the, the Sacramento Kings last year, as you see, the numbers are phenomenal. We all questioned, would he come into this season with those same type of numbers? Well, his points have, have jumped up. His field goal percentage has fallen off. So people will say, oh, he's, he's not as efficient. But you look at his true shooting percentage, which factors in two-point shots, three-point shots, and free throws. And as you see, he's getting to the line way more. So he's exactly the same amount as efficient, and he's got career high in the assist numbers. So he's playing really, really great basketball. It looks like uh, he's sort of found that, that new life yeah. of his. Looks this is a number two guy. That's, exactly. yeah, that's it. We've talked exactly. about it before. He's comfortable in that I, role. I like the deal, too. I mean, it's a guy that makes too much probably as it is yeah. right now with $19.5 million. Now he's going to be around that $13 million range. Yeah. That it's, seems completely fair. He's making less than a guy like Rubio. Yeah, yeah he's older yeah. for sure, but less than Rubio. Burks-type money, again, he's older, but... He's not an old man no, he's by not, any stretch he's of the imagination. But, he, but he's not the sort of guy, like you say, he's not a number one guy. No one's going to throw right. number one guy money at him. It's a good deal for him. It's a good deal for the Kings. Yeah, it makes sense. And a great compliment, as we've seen, yeah. with DeMarcus. Because yeah. this guy can still, when he gets going, he can catch on fire. All the attention has to go to him. Opens up a little more space for DeMarcus Cousins. Back to that King Spurs game, though. Mm. Very excited. We had our first, <laughs> arguably our first clutch wedgie test. Yeah, we, we show you every wedgie that happens here. We also say that every wedgie is like a snowflake because it's unique. Well, that's a lie. But in this instance, <laughs> this one is unique in that the Kings were up one, 45 seconds left. They throw up a wedgie. Omri Caspi gets wedged right in there. Of course, the had that rebound. The Spurs had that rebound. So it goes to a jump ball. Instead, the Kings get the basketball yeah. and they score. <laughs> a game-changing wedgie. I think that's pretty clear to say. A game-changing wedgie here on the Starties. On the Starties. Starties. Oh, yeah. Starties. Yeah, that's right. Spurs, the Spurs might lead to protest then that the game was decided by a wedgie. Like, <laughs> that's, that's fair. And we got the evidence. And we showed you there behind us. Uh, we didn't have a wedgie on Sunday, so the count right now is one day mm -hmm. without a wedgie. Hopefully we get one tonight. <laughs> got to take a break. Lots more still to come on the show. When we return, Brent Berry is going to join us live in studio to discuss whether or not we should feel sorry for Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Do we feel sad for Kobe? <laughs> Should we? We'll talk about it next. You're watching The Starters. Back with Starters, into the bone zone, joined by two-time <laughs> NBA champ, 14-year so, vet, that one, Brent that one. <laughs> He's still, still figure that terribly out. confused by this camera yeah. setup. Uh, Bones, thanks for joining us. Good to As see you always, guys. Let's get right into it. Last night, Kobe Bryant scores 44 points in 31 minutes against the Warriors. Lakers still lose by 21 points. They're now 1-9. It's a West worst record there. He had flu-like symptoms. And he had a bad eye at one point. He does I, have, I wish I was that sick. <laughs> yeah, he does have old legs. According to Pelton by uh, Kevin Pelton, his 44 points were the fifth most by a player in 31 minutes or fewer since 85, 86. Wow. Guys like Jordan and Gilbert Arenas and stuff like that, Jared Smith once did it. He's lost seven times when scoring 50 points or more. Wow. 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 <laughs> well, he uh, was asked about all the shot attempts and the scoring and of course still losing. And he had, he had a lot to say, but here's a small quote from Kobe after the game uh, on his shot selection. I'd rather not have to do that, but you can't just sit back and watch crime happen in front of you. Great quote. It is a great oh, quote. Is it crime? CSI. We had him on last night, and, and we were listening to that. And uh, guy, he's he's becoming a great quote machine. Oh, yeah. he's on fire right now, yeah, and he and he's upset, job. and rightfully so. And I, I, we want to throw this at you. Any part of you feel sorry for Kobe Bryant right now with what's happening? Not, not really. Team? No, I, I feel sorry when you know somebody forgets your birthday or you know <laughs> your, something happens to your pet, like it get, gets run over in the street. But right. I, I I don't feel bad for. 
for Kobe in any way. I mean, let's, you have to be realistic about what it is that the Lakers are and yeah. more appropriately, what they aren't. I mean, you thought that this team was going to be competitive in the Western Conference? Forget uh -uh. about yeah. it. Right. And so I think the thing that's really crazy with, with Kobe right now um, and what's going on, the fact that it's one of the worst teams, it's the worst Laker team in 66 years. Right. They've never had a worse record after 10 games. One and nine. They are uh, a train wreck. <laughs> and the fact of the matter is, what's Kobe's responsibility? If you thought that Kobe Bryant was going to be patient and help bring these guys along, um, excuse me, but have you not seen him play his entire career? Not something that he does. So all of these battles that are going on, Kobe with his legacy and chasing MJ in the scoring title, uh, Kobe and trying to bring along what it is that this Laker roster assembles. Kobe Bryant, his relationship with legendary Laker Byron Scott and how the coach is relating to the players. Then you go from team to management and what it is the responsibility for management is with regards to the team. And then team to the fan base in Lakerland, which is so secular. It's Kobe fans and Laker fans. Right, right. There, there are people that love the Lakers because Kobe is on the Lakers, and then there are people who love Kobe Bryant, period. So this last night was, to me, guys, a, a quintessential Laker game, which is what people should be, expect from this team for the rest of this year and foreseeably for the rest Until of next year with no Randall sure. and nobody yeah. to develop. I mean, that's, that's what they are. You brought up him chasing Michael Jordan's record. And I'm glad you did because I don't know if you saw Dave McMenamin, who used to cover the Lakers, tweeted. Yes, I know Dave. Good. Yeah, tweeted this last night. He's now covering the Cavs, but tweeted last night that league source suggested to the McMenamin that Kobe is making sure he passes MJ in career points while he's healthy. How would Mac 10 know this? <laughs> and, and once he does, he'll settle into team ball. Now, I like it. He's only 320 points behind Jordan. We're looking at like a first, second week of December. Yeah, I think, yeah, 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 kind yeah, of yeah before Christmas. If he, keeps up the, if he keeps up the shot attempts and scoring, yes, we are. And then he'll pass MJ, and then he'll settle in to team ball. I mean, a, a little hilariousness <laughs> there from. Yeah, I, I believe that. Yeah, you don't believe that. <laughs> yeah. But, okay, is Kobe at fault? Um, for not trusting his teammates here, though? Or is it his well, teammates well, at fault for not really helping him out? I'll, I'll refer to, I'll, I'll ask Lee about this. Right. Is he not also trying to prove people for the last two seasons because of his injuries in the first month of the season, trying to prove to all these people just how capable he is yeah. of doing the things he said he was going to do? How, is, how are the guys in the team going to stand in the way of him proving that to the rest of the naysayers. Yeah, well, I mean, but you look at the roster around him, like, who could he trust on that roster anyway? I think the only guy he trusts right now, in my honest opinion, because I've had to watch Laker games because I work here, mm -hmm. is the... Is, Sorry about that. It's okay. <laughs> I, I enjoy it. I enjoy every aspect of it. Uh, Jordan Hill, to me, is the only guy that he actually entrusts with the way that he approaches the game, the type of effort he gives on both ends of the court yeah. right now. He's the only guy that there's some sort of connectivity mm. to. But even with Jordan Hill, what, what's the best case scenario he can give a team? Can he post up guys all game long? He, he just hasn't got that capability in him. Well, we're talking so much about just Kobe and what he can do offensively for them. Yeah. This team is it's the, the other end. It's yeah. the defensive oh, end of yeah. the floor. We heard Byron Scott last night just getting all over the guys, specifically talking about the bigs. Um, and, and how they're just not giving any effort. So there's so many things going on with the Lakers. That's what makes this, to me, one of the most intriguing conversations throughout the year. This is one of the worst teams in the history of the Laker franchise. Yeah. It's going to be one of the most talked about because Kobe Bryant is still Kobe Bryant and an icon for our league. That's what I question, though. How, they are horrible defensively, and we thought yeah. they were going to be pretty bad. But Wait, how much of that... 112 a game? Yeah, they're yeah. giving up a ton of points, yeah. and it's, it's pathetic. But how much of that is because guys are like, we're coming down here, standing around, Kobe yep. is just going to jack it up. Would you, I mean, everyone's played rec ball with a guy that just goes <laughs> down and jacks shots. Do you really try on the defensive end when that's Yeah, how, how fun is that to ask when you're playing with a guy who just jacked? you want to go play some Who should I throw under the bus? I, was just, I went to you. Uh, not fun. I'd call Trey. I'd call Trey that guy. <laughs> oh, I, I can carry a team. <laughs> but, but do you know what I mean? Efficiently, though. Can you carry them no, efficiently? No, not <laughs> But I'm a big Kobe fan. Impact. Hey, if the energy, you know, they always talk about Mike D'Antoni's offense, talking about the ball has energy, and if you share that energy on the offensive end, it transfers down the defensive end. Of course you're seeing the reaction from those guys. But as the season goes on, as these games and weeks go on, if Kobe Bryant stays in this same frame of mind, um, 
it'll just be interesting to see how those guys pull away and get away from what it is that's right. happening there. And that for the Lakers is a, is a true reality. It's as far from a team it's as far from a team that I could think of in the past few years because at least in Philly, they're trying to figure out what they have. Mm -hmm. In Lakerland, with most of those guys, you know what you have. Right. To expect anything else than what you're, be what you're being shown right now, you're, you're crazy. And you I mentioned Philly. See anything else. The Lakers' defense is way worse than Philly's, which that's, is astonishing that's to bad. say. It's way worse. It's crazy. I don't want to put kidding. you on the spot. Yeah. You ever play with a ball hog, though? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At Duncan. times, at times, uh, you know, my years in Seattle with GP. So at times, he had a tendency to get get some numbers. There you go. There you go. Did you try? Did you try as hard on the defensive end? I never tried. No, it was easy. For you. I always tried the exact same on the defensive end. Yeah, which right? was not much. Is that Wait a minute. I'm a great team defender. <laughs> Bones, thank you as always. Gotta take a break. What when we return. That? That's Lee Ellis dressed as a unicorn. Well, no, oh, that's just something else. That's scary. Well, Lee Ellis will be a unicorn when we return. He's making me horny. <laughs> Welcome back to the starters. Uh, I'm already laughing because you're about to see something very, very crazy. You might remember last week it was rivalry week in the starters fantasy league. Tass and I going ahead. I, I got Tass six to three, but. Trey was going against Lee, and they bet on the loser showing up today as the starter's fantasy unicorn. Well, you see there that Trey absolutely killed Lee. So, ladies and gentlemen, unleash the Aussie unicorn! Come on, come on in, you yeah. creep! That's what you're doing? Yeah, this is it, man. What? Hey, if you're a unicorn, you hey, gotta prance. Prance around this I game. I said, unleash the see. unicorn. Run, unicorn. Get those crews a clopping. Can you see it all? Not really. Okay, careful, can you, man. Can you get to the front of the desk? Can you prance hey. out there? Carefully, Please. careful. Don't touch me. Man, I can't see where I'm going here, guys. Here, I can you. barely breathe. Yeah, help that unicorn out. <laughs> all right, time for Pickers of the Week, presented by the General what Insurance. Lee, wander yeah. back here. Okay, okay. All right. I Guys, got I got Sean you. Williams, oh, I don't like to. Ben McLemore, oh. Nick Young, Miles Plumley, some Ooh. possible pickups as you head in to this week. Uh, not owned in a lot of the Yahoo fantasy leagues. Uh, Unicorn. Stop breathing so heavy. Oh, it's a bit hard, Tassie. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, you wanted to talk about Nick Young. Please. Yeah, I was going to say, Nick Young, he's got four games this week. It's his first four games of the season. Average 18 points a game last year. It doesn't give you too much else, but the Lakers need help, and he's probably going to contribute a lot this week. So grab, grab Nick Young if he's available. <laughs> yeah, you can say he's a magical kind of player. Yeah. Right yeah. <laughs> Excellent, Lee. Uh, quick look at the fantasy schedule. Week four, a lot of teams, a whole bunch of teams playing four games. Three teams they may want to avoid just because they have a very easy schedule and not a lot of games. The Hawks, Kaka, Warriors, and Pacers. Uh, I mean, how close does he look like to the fantasy unit? Is the, is the real question there. I want to get maybe a side by side of Lee. And uh, uh, you're all right, Lee. You're breathing very <laughs> heavy. It's just it's a little bit uh, claustrophobic in here, I tell you. But you know, you know, Trey. You talk about the tights that guys are wearing. I think this might be the next thing that they wear the full <laughs> yeah, body suits. Full body. Yeah, yeah. It's, like it's kind of comfortable. You just picked up your water like you're gonna pour it into yeah. your nostrils. Like it? how are you gonna drink out of it? You went from the baggiest pants in the business to the tightest <laughs> pants in the business in one yeah. night. It's a good it's a look new for thing. you. All right, let's get to the. Uh, you got some Ray Allen calves. Let's get to the weekend. <laughs> yeah, let's get to the here. weekend. A lot of whoopsies. stuff happening. A lot of stuff going on right this second, but this weekend as well, Tess. Yeah, Timothy Mozgov can't catch this pass. It was part of the Nuggets' eight point second quarter on Sunday. Then Andre Drummond, usually good for a couple throwdowns, he throws it right over the rim. Whoop. That's oh. hard to do. That is hard to do, especially for that guy. A uh, few airballed free throws this weekend. Start with Josh Smith on Friday. Just a bit short. Javel McGee. At least got mesh, mm. but uh, yeah. It, actually, pretty good form from McGee there. Just yeah, looked good. Little Wesley short. Johnson of the Lakers, five seconds left, he's gonna score! He's gonna score, no! <laughs> Wipe out and a couple leg pumps there too. Wesley Johnson, legs give out. That's a force. Someone did right a poor mopping job. Uh, Saturday, Lance Stevenson, a game against the Warriors, runs into a Harrison Barnes screen, and that's his hand, folks, that slaps himself which then causes himself to sort of flop. Yeah, he flopped. His own <laughs> hand made him his flop. His own on the play. hand made him flop. <laughs> that was great stuff. <laughs> and we've got Shaquille O'Neal attending the Lakers game on Sunday. Mike Trudell, the Lakers sideline reporter, gets a good head rub from Shaq. Let's see that one more time. Check out the size of the hand wow. compared to the head. Pretty astonishing. Mike Trudell, not a giant man, though. 
It's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it I mean, doesn't it's matter. not six I mean, foot five or anything. It doesn't have the side, the head of a unicorn. No. <laughs> no, don't, hey, don't touch. Wow, it, it is hot. We have it to is. return that. This is scorching Ooh, hot. Uh, it is easy, Tessie. Easy on the snow. One, <laughs> one more weekend whoopsie type moment. I hope you guys caught this on Friday. Gary Harris uh, with the Nuggets in his first game. Huge dunk. Huge dunk in traffic against the Pacers. Mom there to watch him. Missed it. Oh. <laughs> Oh my, I missed it! She missed it! That's unfortunate there. Again, what a dunk it was! A massive dunk, and, and mom is there in attendance, got the jersey on and everything. I mean, that could be, could be his ball. greatest dunk of his career. I mean, maybe. It's early, but it could be. You never know. And mom it was on TV. You're right, it's on the YouTube. All right, All right. All right. The unicorn's stuff. feeling this. Beat. Yeah, the unicorn's gonna stick around. Fancy unicorn will be right back for Lee's very self play tonight. Get up and dance, unicorn. DJ Ronnie Segway's kicking dance. these beats. Woo! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Man. Keep We're going. going. I can't breathe, man. <laughs> <laughs> Back with the starters, horrible Friday night in the pick and payoff contest for both Tass and I. We agreed on all the games. We went one and four. Mm -hmm. Sometimes not as easy as it looks, so nothing changes in the overall record. Tonight's picks, well, we disagree on a lot of games. We both like the Suns and the Clippers. I'm taking the Hornets, Rockets, Blazers. You're taking the Mavs, Grizzlies, Pelicans. So three it's games. It's a very tough night in the association. Yeah. Maybe Friday's got me a little worried as you're, well. You're absolutely right. And if you're just joining us, yes, that's a man dressed as a unicorn. Uh, Friday night. <laughs> Friday night. <Say> hello. <laughs> 76ers. Uh, James Harden. <laughs> we wanted to show you this. Lee, you found this. James Harden yeah. putting on a dribbling display. Uh, step back, knocks it down. I, I love this play so much because you know why? It reminds us. It reminds us of the greatest crossover of all time. <laughs> Justin Bieber! <laughs> Put him in the mix! With the crossover there, yeah. Very... You really need a Bieber counter as well to go along with the wedgie counter, I think. How yeah, many times you could use this clip? Right. Well, you're right. I see the similarities yeah. between the yeah, move. Great move. We're only missing the Bieber stare there. Lee. Yes. If, you can, if you're still breathing, can yes. we get to your very solid oh, yes, play yes, yes. Now, it wasn't a lot of love on the hardboard last night for the Lakers, but Kobe at least did make this beautiful play here. Look at that inside to Ed Davis. One of the very few assists we saw from Kobe and the Lakers. If they do a few more of those, maybe they'll start winning. That's what I call <laughs> oh, a oh, very oh, solid You're play. looking at your camera. Right, no, right. you are, you are. All right, all right. There you go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> all right, Lee. Yo. Thank you very You're much. Welcome. Good sport. Lost a bet, dressed as a unicorn. Guys, we'll be back tomorrow. Lots of great games on tonight, so we'll break them all down. Thanks for joining us, folks. And remember, just because you say you can make the argument that, it doesn't mean that you're making an argument. Where are you going? This is just getting up. It's a little uncomfortable. <laughs> Race the night, people.